Hi everybody, today we would like to share with you another thing from Kingo. And this specific thing is going to be the power plug. We're going to tell you what all these cool little wires mean. So stay tuned. Hey guys, we're going to talk about the power plug today. I know that's not really exciting, but we get, for us, you know, we do this daily and we do tons and tons of radios. So it's mind numbing for us what these, these colors mean. You know, it's like I see them in my dreams at nighttime. Right. It's, it's pitiful. But I understand that some of you out there, this might be the first time you're putting in a radio. And you don't know what these things mean. So we're going to take a minute or two, possibly five, and we're going to tell you all about them. Now, a couple things real quick before we do that. We make tons of videos. Lots of videos. So if there's another subject you're interested in, Go to our channel and check it out. We got a ton of things on all these radios. It doesn't matter the brand. This one just happens to be on Kenwood. And if you find it interesting, click subscribe. on the subscribe button. Yep. Okay, enough pandering. Let's get on to the fun part. Let's start with the easy one. It's got this really long black wire here. This is going to be chassis ground. Okay. This needs to go to a piece of metal and or if you're installing a radio with a nice radio interface, either a generic plug or a smart harness, this is going to go to a matching black wire. Now, what I do recommend is when you're hooking this up in a car, and you hook it up to the cool little other harness, check on the other side and make sure there's a wire there in that ground hole. There's some manufacturers, Nissan being one of mm -hmm. them, that doesn't always put a ground wire in the harness. Even though the harness you bought has one, there's nothing on the other side. That's why this wire is a little extra long. It's because there's not always a ground. Okay, Mitsubishi does the same thing too. They don't even bother to put a black wire. All right. Next wire. Next wire be red. Red is ignition. This is what's going to get power when the key turns on and lose power when the key turns off and or the door opens if you have a modern car. Now, this wire is unique because a lot of cars nowadays don't have this wire. That's why you have a smart harness because there is no accessory in the harness. This needs an ignition wire or accessory to turn on. Now we're going to come over here to the yellow wire. This is your memory wire. This gets constant 12 volts and is hooked up to a constant 12 volt source, which is directly hooked up to the battery via the fuse box. Cool. Okay. This guy, the orange white. This is illumination. When this gets 12 volts, it dims the face of the radio. Okay. So if you're like, why isn't my radio dimming? It's so bright at night. This wire didn't get hooked up properly. Now, there again, just like the ground, Sometimes the manufacturer doesn't put this wire in the harness or it puts it in a different spot. So if you need it hooked up, you may need to use a digital multimeter and or test light to make sure that this wire is there and that it's functioning properly. That takes us to the brown wire. <laughs> brown wire is phone mute. There's really only one application for this that I've used in the past many, many years. And that's for if I'm doing a GM car and it has OnStar and I want to mute the sound. Other than that, this really doesn't do anything and you're more than likely never going to hook it up. So don't even worry about that. Next, we have three blue wires. Okay, now these cause a lot of heartache for a lot of people. So we're going to break them down really slow. Okay, first one, blue with a white stripe. This is going to be the remote turn on. This is what is going to turn on the amplifiers or amplifier or anything else in the car that needs to turn on other than the power antenna. Okay. Now, Kenwood has a really bad habit of putting this plug in a box on a cheap radio that the blue wire, which is the next wire, is the power antenna wire, doesn't work. So, you have to be real careful on this guy. So, if for some reason you put in a Kenwood radio and your reception all of a sudden sucks, Chances are good you bought one and Kenwood screwed you. They love it. This isn't getting 12 volts. So you can be able to there again use your meter or whatever and see if this is putting out 12 volts. Have no fear. It's not a bad radio. It's just Kenwood uses one plug and they don't bother to tell you whether or not this wire is going to work. They've been doing it for years. It's a lot of fun. So in that case what you'd do is you'd hook the antenna up to the blue with a white stripe. Now if you want to avoid all this and you don't have a motorized antenna so you're not worried about it. Just go ahead and hook everything up to the blue with the white stripe and call it a day. Now the third blue wire is this guy right here, which is a totally different color from these guys. Okay, it's a light blue with a yellow stripe and it's got a big piece of tape on it. One side it says remote connect and the other side it says steering wheel remote input. 
This is going to be what you're going to hook up your steering wheel interface to. This wire right here. Not the blue with the white stripe or the blue, the light blue with the yellow. This is not a remote turn on. You don't twist all these together. They all have their purpose. That's that one. Okay. Got We're doing good. Enable. Okay. Yeah. Hope that cleared that up. All right, so now we have eight more wires. And these are the fun ones. These are the speaker wires. Okay, these are the high output speaker wires. These are where the 50 watts by four come into play. I had a guy ask me some questions about this and I thought we'd cover these. So these are what are called high level. Your radio, your factory radio has high level output most of the time unless it's got an outboard amplifier. So we have four pairs. We have a white, we have a gray, we have a purple and a green. Okay, we number them. When you're sitting in a car, you're in the driver's seat, it's number one. Your passenger, he's number two. And he might be number two. Okay, then you have three, it's right behind you. And you have four, which is over here, behind the passenger. So, how we number them is, so when we're talking, and we're like, did you check two? Did you check three? We know what we're looking at, because it's a heck of a lot easier than saying, did you check the passenger front, left, yeah, no. Just check the tweeter at two. All right, that's, that's our logic. Okay. Moving forward. So, the whites are going to be one, the grays are going to be two. The greens are going to be three, the purples are going to be four. Okay? And they're almost set up like that if you look at the plug this way, or that way. See? One, two, three, four. All right, now, on each one of these, they're going to have a solid and they're going to have a stripe. The solid is going to be positive. The stripe is going to be negative. You want to make sure you get that right, because if you hook your speakers up out of phase, they're going to move like this, and then you're going to have a really big set of Bose noise-canceling headphones in your car, and you're going to be like, where'd all the bass go? Where'd all the rumble? There's no rumble in my car. Speakers canceling each other out. Okay, so, now, all, like I said, all Kenwood radios come with this harness. It doesn't matter which one it is, they're all going to have a version of this harness. Unless you've got an older radio, they did make some of their older navvies had a funky plug that they don't use much anymore. But with that being said, if you buy a video head unit, the back of the video head unit is going to have two wires on it. And we just so happen to have one right here. It's going to have a purple with a white, and it's going to have a light green. The light green is your emergency brake. As you notice right here, it's screwed to the chassis. This is a factory bolt that we've loosened up, put our ring terminal behind, and tightened it back up. That provides a ground to this wire. This is an emergency brake wire. As long as it's grounded, your radio will work. If you want to hook it up to the emergency brake, more power to you. This is the reverse wire. You need to hook the reverse trigger up to this. Reverse trigger would be from the lights, possibly, in the rear of the car, if you want to. If you bought a smart harness, they're digital. It's going to generate it for you. But nine times out of 10, if you just have a generic plug, you're gonna have to go to the reverse light. Now, sometimes you can find it somewhere in the driver's kick or the passenger kick. If you're unsure, the safest bet is to just go to the light. It's gonna be there every time, I promise. Okay, that's that. You know the rest of that phrase. Um, okay, guys, we hope this cleared up a little bit of mystery on the power plug. Thank you for watching as usual. And you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Right here. Well, you guys have a great night, and we'll see you again next time, hopefully. Enjoy.